and welcome to another episode of the Byproduct Podcast. My name is Ian Pruckner. I am your host, and man, I'm so excited to be with you here today, getting better together, because when we get better, things get better, and I'm super excited to be joined by a friend of mine, Coach JC. Coach JC, what's up, baby? What's up, my man? All day, Ian. Hey, I'm super blessed, honored, and grateful uh, to be on your show, and I'm just excited. I believe today is going to be a life-changing show for your listeners and your viewers, so I'm stoked, brother. Well, man, I, I believe that too. I would definitely never invite anybody onto the podcast that I did not just love their energy, their character, mm. their integrity, what they're doing in life. And man, listen, Coach JC, he's a performance coach, motivational speaker. You could tell that already. Author, entrepreneur, and founder of the Win All Day Movement. And uh, let's let's start there. Talk about the Win All Day Movement, right? Because you know, the, the fact is, in life, there are wins and losses, right? And w wins like a bad word today, right? Like, oh, everybody, everybody should get a trophy for just existing and taking up air, right? But the fact is, w we don't always win, right? In fact, winning is a very discriminatory thing. I mean, can you believe I just said that, right? There's only one winner. No matter how many people play, there can only be one number one, right? And so that's pretty amazing. Talk to me about the win all day movement. Where did it come from? What are you doing there? Because I absolutely love it. I love the energy behind it. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. So, you know, I believe this, Ian. I believe that every single person was born a winner, that they can win. And uh, here, here's the bottom line. I wasn't always a winner in my book. And here's what I mean by that. You said it. I think winning's relative, right? It's like success. It's what you believe winning is to you. And so for me, winning is every single night to lay my head on the pillow and know that I maximized my God-given talents and abilities, that I showed up on purpose with a purpose, that I made my greatest impact on this world, and that I'm living out the world that I believe I should be living out based off of, for me, calling and purpose in what I believe I was called to do. And so I say that to say this. Win All Day Now is a movement. We are so blessed and honored to serve people. Uh, really, there's three levels to it. The first level is a fitness division where we help people look, feel, and perform their best. That's where I got my start. The second level is uh, the personal development where I wrote six books, speaking. We do high-level masterminds. I wrote a playbook. We go into organizations, and we actually build people for a living, personal development. And the last and final division is the business side where we then show you how to do what I did and take your story, your mess, Flip that and build a purpose-driven, highly profitable personal brand so that you can coach and get your message to the world and make your greatest impact. So we're hoping a lot of people win, but I can tell you this, it all started at the lowest point for me when I was not winning, man. So that's what we're blessed to do today. Yeah, so that's what I want to ask you about, right? Because your energy is contagious and you're helping a lot of, a lot of people really step up their game and, and find those wins. I love what you said, you know, what is winning? It, it's somewhat subjective and it's somewhat objective, depending on, on what category you're looking at, you know, but, but ultimately walking into that place, I believe the same thing. We're all born winners, right? We're born winners. We, we learn losing. We weren't born that way. We learned that all on our own, right? And so you've got this energy, you've got all this great stuff happening, but where did it start? Take us back on, on, uh, on a little journey yeah, how did Coach JC come to be? You said started at the lowest point. Talk to us about that. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I grew up in the great state of New Jersey, Ian, and uh, I was raised by a single mom. My dad walked out on us when uh, I was about eight years old. My sister was two years older than me, and uh, my mom was amazing. She worked really hard, four jobs at a time, and, you know, we saw a lot of pain and suffering, though, and from a monetary perspective, we lacked a lot, um, but from like a moral perspective and a faith based perspective, I saw my mom just always believing things were going to be okay and we were, we were going to make it. And I'll never forget, Ian, seeing all the pain and suffering. There were some defining moments. We moved a lot. We lived in shelters, which are group housing. We visited uh, local food pantries and, you know, uh, to get our groceries every Sunday. And like, if we got to go to the grocery store, like it was amazing. It was like going to Disney World because we got to pick out our own groceries but then there was always the embarrassing moments where, you know, we had to go check out and, you know, my mom was going to pull out what the government gives you called food stamps. And I was always extremely embarrassed of that. And I was always like had this discontent. I hated to see people be in pain and suffering. And I didn't know what it meant, but I remember exactly where I was. We were living in a shelter. I was on the top part of a bunk bed. I was looking down at my sister, Ian, and I was crying and I was weeping and I was asking the question, why? Like, why us? Why do we have to go through this? Why can't I have the 
the Michael Jordan sneakers like everybody else. And I remember at that young age, eight years old, I didn't know what it was at the moment, Ian, but it was this thing inside of me. It was compassion and empathy to help people win. And it was also this hatred to see people be in pain and suffering. And so I was on a mission at eight years old, brother, and I made an oath with myself that I was going to be the one to save the family. I was going to rescue my mom and my sister from this poverty-stricken life. And I was going to do it one of two ways. By making a lot of money, it was either going to be a professional rapper or, or a <laughs> basketball player. And the, honestly, the rap career didn't work out real well for me back in the day. It was Vanilla Ice, Ice Ice Baby. And so uh, I, basketball was my sport. I became pretty good at basketball. And it took me out to Oklahoma, a Jersey boy in Oklahoma, to play basketball at a university called Oral Roberts University, ORU. And in 1999, Ian, I made one decision, the power of choice, that radically changed my life. There was a cute girl on campus. You know, all the athletes were chasing her. And guess who won? This guy. And she got pregnant. You know, I'm 19 years old. That was frowned upon. They said, we're going to get married. We're married. We're divorced in eight months. And now I end up throwing away my basketball opportunity. I end up 19 years old with a kid on the way. I end up over 400 thousand dollars in debt fighting to be a dad in a custody battle um and and it just took me to a dark place i ended up suicidal depressed down and out and just had a lurry a very low moment in life but it was at that moment where i had to make some decisions and things started to change so i said winning was built at my lowest moment in in, in, in at that time in life 1999 to 2003 face down suicidal depressed in the fight of my life to be a father in a custody battle. And it was at that moment where I had to figure out, am I going to live? Or am I going to die? And I was able to create a new story by doing some strategic things. And now that most painful moment has become my purpose. And that's where the Win All Day brand was actually birthed. Wow. So, I mean, my goodness, look at you now and look at the difference that you're making. But in those moments, it probably seemed like there was nothing beyond that right now, that right then, that struggle, that trial, that tribulation. And I think that's such an important thing that the people watching right now understand. There is something literally amazing, life-changing, world-shaking on the other side of the trial that you are going through, through right now. What was meant to break you and to destroy you is gonna promote you, it's gonna elevate you, and it's actually gonna be the tool that helps you unlock the door in the lives of a lot of other people who are gonna go through what you're going through now. There is no pain without a purpose, right? And so I love that that part of your story. Talk to me about the things that you did. You said there were, there were a couple of strategies that you used, that you implemented to start making that change. What were those? Yeah, yeah, great question. So. And I agree with you, first of all. I mean, I, my, my, my struggles became my story. We heard all the great slogans and sayings. I mean, the most mess, you know, became my message. The trial became my testimony. And, like, it really happened that that most painful moment became my purpose. And I, I had a friend of, uh, at that time, and, and he said, hey, you know what? You got to go to Bible school. And I'm like, Bible school? I don't want to go to Bible school. I don't even want to be alive. I was laying my head on a carpet in a 600-square-foot apartment, praying every night when I laid my head down that I would not wake up. I was down and out. Last thing I wanted to do to go was Bible school. I enrolled in this Bible school in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and uh, I don't don't remember a lot that happened in Bible school because I was such in a funk, Ian. I was so down and out and depressed. But I remember this one class, and it talked about the power of renewing your mind. Romans 12, 2, do not be conformed to the things of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And I started to look around Bible school, and I was like, wait a second. A lot of these people are reading the Bible. They're coming to Bible school. They're going to church on Sunday, but why are they not winning? And I'm losing. And I had a professor say this. He said, man, you got to take these promises. These are promises, these principles, and you got to implement them into your life. And so I just started to realize there's a secret formula that basically you take the Bible and you actually implement it in your life and you could actually win. It's the greatest personal development book out there. And so I combined what the Word of God says, and I started taking these biblical principles and implementing in my life. I got a hold of Tony Robbins, and I got a hold of personal development, and I looked myself in the mirror and asked myself some different questions. And through the Bible and the grace of God and personal development, I was able to create an entire new story for my life. And I created Ian, Coach JC, the guy that you're looking at today, I created him through implementing the Word of God in personal development. Wow, that's amazing. You know, I I love what you talked about there because the secret, it was in one word that you said, principles. 
See, God has principles that he has set the world up on. It's running on autopilot yep. on these principles. It, it, it's so interesting because you look at people who are believers, who are struggling in life. It's like, well, how could you be a believer? You, you have the author of the instruction manual yep. is your father. And yet you're still struggling. And why? Because people are not living the principle, Huge. right? They, they have the relationship, but they're not acting on the principle. And so you can have a relationship and still struggle if you're not following the principles that, that the master builder laid out. And what was interesting, too, is you'd see people all the time and be like, you know, look at these people out here, these worldly people. They're succeeding in their winning, you know, and here I am. I'm, you know, I'm a follower of Christ, but I'm struggling. What gives, right? Yeah. And what I saw was these people were, were, were unaware but following the principles that God had set out, right? And then you had people that were aware of the principles not doing it. I think it's so yeah. powerful. There. It's a, the principles, if you act yeah. on the principles, the principles produce those results in your life yeah. all of the time. So, yeah. so talk to me a little bit about, you know, obviously, you know, it looks like you bench press 600 pounds, right? Okay, <laughs> like, like you are super fit uh, physically, mentally, Right. Talk to me about some of the disciplines. Like, where can somebody start today? They're like, you know what, Coach AC, I, I, I'm tired of being where I where I am. I'm I'm tired of being stuck. But it seems like every time I try, I just kind of go back to where I am. What are the one or two things that you would say? Hey, if you want to change and you want to change today, start here. Yeah, I great question. I think really there's three questions that I asked myself, Ian. When I was at that lowest point and I looked in the mirror and I had that real conversation with myself. And before I go there, you know, I was an athlete, right? And so if you're an athlete listening, if you're not an athlete, you know, athletics, I started to sit there and ask myself, like, as an athlete, you know, what did I do to be pretty successful? And what do athletes do? And I realized I was missing on, on out on a winning formula, right? And, and I looked back and I'm like, man, as an athlete, I always had a coach, right? I always had a coach. Right now, down and out, suicidal, $400,000 in debt, fighting to be that. I had no coaches. I had no mentors in my life when basketball was done. If it worked as a basketball player, maybe it could work in life. So the first thing I did, what all athletes have, is I went out and I found mentors. I hated who I was, Ian. Hear what I'm telling you. I was living with guilt and shame, couldn't look my mom in the eyes. I hated who I was, threw away my basketball story. My whole identity was in basketball. And so I started to look and say, okay, if I hate who I am right now, who would I be if really I was who God created me to be? And I created this avatar of Coach JC. And then I went and found people that were at that level, physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, relationship-wise, making money. And I went and sought them out. And they became my coaches, my mentors. And so the first thing, if you're listening right now, and you don't have people in your life that are able to coach you, to help you, you've got to get a coach. The second thing, Ian, is I realized as an athlete, you don't go into a game without a playbook. I was just, I was going through life. I was just waking up depressed, being led by feelings and emotions. And I realized I didn't know what place to run. And so I had these coaches, I had the Bible, and I started to put together a playbook, and I call it the winning five, of five areas that I started to move the ball in, and I started to run the plays, the X's and O's, every single day. So now I had people coaching me, mentoring me. I knew the place to run on a daily basis. And then the last thing is, how many people do life alone? See, very little in sports, unless you're, even, even if it's a sport like tennis or golf, you still have coaches, you have people you do life with. I had to put myself on a winning team, and I realized that was a secret recipe. Have coaches in my life that can help me fast-track my results, get me out of this rut, have a playbook so I don't just go through life and are led by feelings and emotions because I was suicidal, down, out, and depressed, and put myself on a winning team. Iron sharpens iron. Get around people that are going to help me win, that are not just going to tell me what I want to hear, but what I need to hear. And those three things combined with asking myself a few different questions help me create Coach JC and my life today. Yeah, we're literally creating ourselves, right? God's the creator with a capital C, and he's called us creators with a, with a lowercase c, right? We have the ability to shape and mold our lives, and yet so many of us are contented by being shaped and molded by the circumstances surrounding us. Yeah. So, so you mentioned five areas where you want to start moving the ball. I think I know what those five areas are, but I want to hear it from you. What are those five areas where you're like, you know what, I have to start moving the ball in this area if I want my life to be all that it could be? Yeah, super simple, man. For To win and win all day, the five areas are focus, faith, 
fitness, family, and finances. And so for me, the first thing was renewing the mind, my mindset. I started to understand that I was so distracted. I was so moved by the current situation that I was stuck seeing only what I could see in the natural, right? And so I started to train my focus get on distracted and understand that just like you train your body, you can train your mindset and emotions. Then I started to train spiritually and understand that, like I said earlier, you got to understand how to lock in and have a relationship with God. It's about belief and faith in God that you were created with a purpose, but also one of the greatest beliefs you could have, Ian, besides a belief in God, is a belief in yourself. So I started training my belief and my confidence and my faith in God. Yes, and my calling, my purpose, but in who I can become and the things I could do. And then fitness. I started to realize the power of my body and the direct relation between physical and mental. And I started to get around people and the strength coach at that time at Oral Roberts University. And I started to train my body so I could feel good and perform good on this new mission. And and then I started to talk about family. I threw away, you know, a, you know, a family situation and I knew I was going to be a dad one day and family was bigger than just my immediate family. It was the relationships and the people I was hanging around with, right? We heard the old saying, you'll become the five people you hang around the most. I started to create relationships and connections with people that would help me win. And the last one was finances. I started to realize I got to make money if I'm going to fight to be a dad. And I became an entrepreneur to learn how to make money so I could go fight this custody battle and absolutely become a dad. And I'll tell you this, Ian, when I started to run these plays initially in this winning five, life didn't always get better for me. But I stopped focusing on that outcome as much. And I started focusing on who I needed to become. And when I started focusing on who I need to become... The situation started to shift. I went on to become the youngest strength coach in the nation at 23 years old. I went on to start my first company. I went on to fight in two different states and get full custody of my daughter and raise her. She's 22 today. She came to live with me when she was 10. I went on to start five companies now, write six books, speak on some of the largest stages, run masterminds. And I say that not to impress anybody today, but to please get you to understand like God's no respect or a person. If right. I was able to do that and he worked it through me, he can do the same thing for you listening right now. So you've got to start to train and get a hold of understanding that you are the X factor. You right now, you're the MVP. And if you want to win, stop focusing on the outcome. Stop focusing on what you can see in the natural at the moment and being moved by that. And start to look in the mirror and ask yourself, who do I need to become? And when I become that person, that's, that's when I'm going to walk out that calling and that purpose in my life. Yeah, that's amazing. You know, you spoke about training yourself on believing in yourself. I want to touch on that because I think that in, in my experience with people, and people would be leaders, people who could be absolute world changers, but they're stuck. And the thing that they're stuck on most is their belief in themselves, right? They've tried before and failed. They've made some promises that they haven't kept. And so how do you train that belief? What would, what would you say the top two or three things that you can do today to begin to build up that belief when it's been battered? Yeah, it's a great question. And so I asked myself a few questions. And, and, and the question I asked myself is, who am I and who I need to become? And so many times we are defined, like, like here's what I'd say, God designed you. Listen and watch it right now. Like you were planned and put on this planet. Like you were destined to do something great. Like you're different. You're unique. There's nobody else like you. And I think so many times, if you're like me, Ian, you can get caught up with living in an identity from your past mistakes, your past failures, the things you did, the career you have. And so one of the greatest things I did, Ian, is I started to understand the power of how to build faith and faith. I'm talking about faith. I'm talking about belief. And so there's, there, you know, death and life are in, there, are in the power of the tongues. That's what the, the power of the tongue. That's what the word of God says, right? Faith comes by hearing. And so I started to think, wait a second. What if I started to become the best preacher in my life? What if I started to become the best coach in my life? What if I started to sell myself on what God says about me and stop believing a lie and a false identity of what I'm believing in the natural right now? So I started to create crazy amounts of winning confessions. And I started to speak and use such a powerful statement, the I am statement, and call those things that are not as if they are. That's what faith is. And so as I did that, I'm I'm starting to speak these things about myself. I didn't believe a word I was saying at the moment. I felt like a fraud. But as I was speaking them, 
I was healing them and building my belief system, training my subconscious mind to take on a new identity. And all of a sudden, I created a whole new identity and a whole new story around what I believed about myself. And I did it through winning confessions, things like um, saying, today is my day. Nothing will get in my way. I'm here on purpose. I have a purpose. I'm strong. I am passionate. I am fearless. I choose faith. I am a winner. I will win and win all day. And I would just all every day. People were like, this dude's crazy. What are you saying? You're talking to yourself. Okay. And I was calling those things. And I didn't believe a word. And then all of a sudden, I started to feel a little different. And all of a sudden, I started to believe it. And then all of a sudden, my life started to line up with what I was saying Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And one of the greatest ways to create belief and faith is to call those things that are not as if they are. Start to speak it so you can hear it and you'll start to create a new identity and belief in who you are and who you can become. So powerful. And I love what you're talking about identity. You know, um, I think that that's another big thing that people get wrapped up in these false identities. They begin to, to identify with their limitations. I'm not this. I'm overweight. I'm yeah. dumb. I'm not a salesperson. I'm not good yeah. at blah, blah, blah. I'm, I'm unlucky in love. And they have all these limitations that they begin to take on as, a, as an identity. And they begin to live those things out in a cycle. Or like you're saying, you know, you had to go back and get your identity from the word of God. What did God say about you? It's such a powerful place because it doesn't matter what's going on around you when you have that, that identity. And so I want to talk to you about that in just a second, but it's so interesting. You know, I, I had an exit from a business that I built earlier this year. I spent 16 years there and it was something I loved dearly. And the number one question I get is how are you dealing with, with it after the fact, right? Like, do you miss it? Do you feel like a part of you is gone? And the answer is not at all. And it's not because I not because I didn't love what I was doing, but it's because my identity was not in that business. It was not in who I was there. Huge. It was in who I am there, right? And what that lets you do is it lets you move through life to reinvent yourself in the way that we need to be reinvented without constantly getting hung up on who we think we are or who we think we're not. Talk to me about identity. That person who's, who's saying, I don't know, I don't feel special, I don't... I, I, you know, I feel like I've got these limitations. I don't know how I'm going to move beyond them. Where would you go to begin to construct that identity properly and appropriately? Yeah, great question. And so, first of all, I always believe in going to the Word of God. And I and, and here's what I'd say. You know, I, our lives, Ian, and you know this, it's a direct reflection of you know, the story that we choose to create, like, like life's going to happen to you, right? Or it's going to happen for you. And life's all about perspective, but life is all about belief and the story that we choose to give it. And so I remember when I was going through hell, I picked up a Tony Robbins book and it said, the meaning of anything in life only has the meaning you choose to give it. And I remember that, that it just resonated with me. And I'm like, wait a second, I could give life a new meaning. And so many times we are our worst enemy. We are, the, we, we are the ones talking us out of winning. And so where I would tell a person to start right now is you've got to first understand and define what winning looks like to you. You talk about identity and who you are and who you can become. But when's the last time we looked in the mirror and said, this is what winning is? I'm talking about vision. Right? So many times we get so clouded and our identity shifts and we live this false identity because we are living just on what we could see in the natural. And so what does winning look like to you? Helen Keller said it best. She said, what's, being, uh, what's worse than being born blind is being born with your sight and no vision. And so right now, I believe the person listening or watching is getting their sight back getting a new vision of who they are, who they can become, and what they can have. And when you start to see different perspective, the meaning of anything in life, only as a meaning we choose to give it, you start to look in the mirror and say, hold on a second, I'm not going to confess those things about me if I'm a child of God, if I was uniquely placed on this earth, and you start to see different, right? And so I want the person listening today, I want the person watching today, I want you to be inspired, I want you to be motivated to understand that you were born with a purpose, that you were bought with a price, and so 
what can you do and who you can become that you've never been before is possible. Where you can go that you've never gone is possible. You know, you got to start to see that. you got to start to see who you can be that you've never been. And so the first thing I say is you've got to create a new vision around how you see yourself and how like, a vision brings hope. A vision brings faith. Right, and so I would encourage the person right now, listen, put it on pause and just close your eyes and start to see the best version of you. Start to see what the Word of God says about you. Start to see yourself in shape again, you know, breaking the, the, the curse of poverty, whatever it might be. Start to see beyond the current situation, Ian, and I believe the first step is you've got to create a different vision, a stronger vision of who you can become and stop confessing what you see in the mirror about yourself at the moment. Does that make sense? Yeah, it absolutely does. And, and you know, uh, when you're talking about vision, it's so funny, you know, the, the life I live today, people sometimes ask me, they say, did you ever imagine that you would be where you are? And I say this in all humility. The answer is I imagined it a hundred thousand times. <laughs> yeah. right? I watched that vision over and over and over and over again in my mind until it pulled into reality, right? It's so powerful. Yeah. But you know, the, 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 the part you talked about assigning meaning, again, this is something that I think so few people get. You know, you can have a, a struggle or a challenge and people might look at that and assign a meaning that, hey, something's wrong. Maybe God doesn't want me to do this. Maybe, maybe this is a sign that I'm not supposed to be going that way. Or you might assign it the meaning that there's something here for me that I need to take into my next level. And yeah. so one person, it's, it's two people, the same exact circumstance, but one yeah. person uses that circumstance as an excuse to stop because of the meaning they assigned it to. The other one uses it as a fuel to move forward because of the meaning they assigned to it. What yeah. we tell ourselves, our story, what we tell ourselves yeah. is probably the most important dialogue going on in our lives. It's not what mm -hmm. we're watching on TV or the book we read. It. It's not even this podcast, really, yeah. although this has been fantastic, right? Some of the tools that you're giving people. It's the story we're telling ourselves about who we are, yeah. where we're going and why we should be there that matters most. So coach JC, listen, top two or three things that you do, you know, we're, as this is being recorded, we're, we're entering into a full blown recession. You know, the world is going to change a lot. I think in the next 12 months, <clears throat> top two or three things you think the people watching the, almost everybody watching this is an entrepreneur of some sort. Okay. What would you say to these people about how do you position yourself to dominate coming into this new and changing landscape? Yeah, it's a great question, Ian. I think there's a lot of doubt. There's a lot of worry. There's a lot of fear. And I'll never forget in 2008, you know, we were going through something similar and I didn't even understand what was going on because I ignored it. And I just keep, I kept building and I built my first ever company in 2008 um, with no money, still $400,000 in debt, fighting to be a dad. And we grew it to, uh, over 400 women. It was Tulsa's first ever fitness program in eight locations. And so again, I go back to what we talked about earlier perspective. And so here, here's what I'd say, here's what I'd say. And what came to me when you asked that is, you know, what's your purpose, right? I believe that when you have a strong enough purpose, people ask me all the time, you know, how, how do you keep showing up the way you show up with so much passion? If you see somebody with no passion, it's because they don't have purpose, right? When you have purpose, it's what allows you to make what's in front of you stronger than what's behind you. When you have purpose, a strong reason, a must, right? It allows you to make what's inside of you bigger than what's outside of you at the moment, the recession, the economy, what the president's saying, what's going on. When you have purpose, it allows you to make what you desire, your vision, your calling, and what you know you're after your mission greater than your greatest excuse. And so I would tell the person right now listening is don't be moved by what you see in the natural. Have a strong purpose right now of why of why you do what you do and why you must win. And I know for me, Ian, it's the purpose that no matter what happens in the economy, no matter what the distraction comes, I have such deep, powerful reasons, such deep, powerful must, this sense of urgency to fulfill my calling. And that purpose is built around pleasure and pain, Ian. But that deep, powerful reason, that why, I'm talking about your purpose, your why, that's what's going to allow you to fight through whatever happens in the natural. The delays, the distractions, the disappointments, it's what's going to allow you to get up after the pain, the setback, the obstacle. The purpose 
is what's going to allow you to keep showing up through the adversity, the trial, the storm, the whatever you're feeling in life. So I would encourage the person right now, but hey, listen, don't worry about what's going on in the natural. Create such strong enough reasons that you will not quit. It's purpose that gets you to keep fighting. And you've got to believe you have a purpose. You're here on purpose. And you need a strong purpose to win. And you need a strong purpose to not just be motivated in life, but to fight through what you see in the natural and win. So that would be my encouragement for the person listening right now is have something so strong that you're willing to die for that no matter what happens out here, you're going to go through, you're going to go over, you're going to go under, and you're going to come out better, not just getting through, but you're going to grow through this. And we're going to look back and you're going to create a testimony that's going to be able to not only impact your life, but the lives of other people. So good. When the why is clear, the how-to will appear, right? When we're dialed in on why, we can endure almost any how. Coach JC, I loved it. You are always uh, bringing such energy, such wisdom uh, to people. So thank you so much for joining me. How do people connect with you uh, offline of this podcast? Where can they find you? How can they get involved with you? Yeah, CoachJC.com. CoachJC.com is the best place. Or social media, Instagram, the Coach JC. Uh, feel free to connect with me if I can serve you in any way. Great. Ian, I just want to say thank you. I am just proud of who you are, who you continue to become, the impact you're having, living a winning life. You represent what winning looks like, baby. And I, and I believe that's such a great example to bring people to win and bring people further the kingdom. So keep showing up on purpose. You have a purpose, Ian. And I'm just blessed that we cross paths and get to do life together. And I thank you and I honor you for allowing me to speak into the lives of your amazing people on this byproduct podcast, brother. Blessings. I appreciate you coming. And everybody, again, thank you so much for joining us today. I know you got a ton of value. Thank you so much. Go follow Coach JC on Instagram. Uh, hit his website up. And man, listen, I know that the best is yet to come because when we get better, things get better. God bless. Until next time, we'll see you soon.